that they go for a tenant so we can build up some leads. For sure. People come home, we get up at like 10, we good. Now, this is it okay if this goes, this going to be edited out, but mm-hmm. this will go on Facebook, mm-hmm. it'll be on Instagram, mm-hmm. it'll be on my YouTube channel and TikTok. Okay. All right. Yeah, cool. So yeah. TikTok will be there. That's what I'm saying. So when you let people going. see your TikTok, yeah. you're going to be eye yeah. sending tweets when it go up. All right. Yeah. 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 Father, we come to you in prayer right now, Lord God. I ask you to do it, Lord God. We pray that you attract the enemy, Lord God, and bring them to yourself, Lord God. Because you said you would draw all men unto you, Lord God. I pray that our words are your words, Lord. And that nobody that watches this show or comments me leaves with that same belief. In Jesus' name, amen. I just seen you backstage at a production. Did you? Yes. Oh, Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm so blessed. All right, so this is what we're looking for right now. Yeah. Yes, we gonna wait till some more people are cool. on. When people see you on, it's gonna be yeah. They gonna be on this thing right here. Okay. We're gonna go ahead and kick off. All right, you guys, we want to welcome you all to another episode of Let's Talk with Ro. And if you guys saw the flyer, you know, tonight we'll be discussing life after the divorce. Tonight, our special, my very special friend is Kevin Taylor. Kevin, thank you so much for being on the show. Well, listen, I appreciate you for having me, Ro. Like, this is an honor. Um, It's amazing. I'm so glad to be here. Stop, 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 (laughs) stop. This is my bro right here, y'all. Do not let this smile fool you. (laughs) Yes. How definitely. many years do we go back? Oh, so I've known bro since <laughs> I was like 16, 17 years old. Yeah, and yeah. how old are you now? I'm 35. Okay, exactly. <laughs> so long story short, guys, this is a good friend of mine. Yes. And Kevin, um, first of all, tell me a little bit about yourself. I want you guys to know just a little something about Kev. Give us a little bit about that long resume. Sure, sure, sure. So, um... Like Bro said, my name is Kevin. I go by KT. Um, some of you may or may not know me. My background is in sales, marketing, um, specifically nightlife. I did a lot of concerts, a lot of event promotions, and brought a lot of big artists into DC. Um, since from probably like 2004 all the way up to like 2013, really. Um, after that, gave my life to Christ and really just been on the path of discovery ever since. <clears throat> right now, currently in sales and marketing, still that's kind of what I do, but really more than anything. Uh, working for the Lord and, and here to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys know I don't waste any time hopping right into the questions. So tonight, Kevin, you know, we're talking about life after divorce. And you know, you went through the ringer yeah. with this. And even though you are young at 35, you have been through a spin yeah. with this topic. And the first thing I want to know is like, how old were you when you got married? Uh, so I was 30. You were Actually, 30? no, 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 no. I was 32 when I got married. Okay, you was 32, 32 when you got married. And how old were you when you got divorced? Actually, no, I'll take that back. We were 30, I was 30 when I got married. By 32, I was divorced. Yeah, <laughs> okay, y'all. 32, so that didn't take long. No. Nah, you know nah, what I mean? When you yeah. married your wife, did you ever think that you would end up in a divorce? Honestly... No, I didn't, because I mean, who really gets, you know, married to get divorced? Yeah. Um, you know, for for me and my situation, um, I just think it was just one of those things that that we decided to do, uh, collectively. Um, but at the same time, I don't think anybody gets married to get divorced. Well, let me say this: I saw Kevin's ex-wife, and she is <laughs> she is a looker. Okay, I want to say she is beautiful. Yeah. So I know you yeah. definitely thought that was hoping yeah. that was going to be forever. Listen, I mean, I definitely thought it was going to be forever. Um, you know, but at the same time, you know, I I, I kind of feel like sometimes as humans, we try to put our hands in God's business and we don't know what we be doing. Okay. Yeah. That's real. Yeah. Okay, so question, what made you want to marry your ex-wife? When did you decide that you were going to propose to her? 
So, you know, for me, and it's funny because I, I had to think back to where I was. Um, and during that time, I had really gotten into ministry. Um, I was like 10 toes down with my church, everything that was going on. Um, so I was praying and I'm like, okay, God, I think this is where you want me to go. You know, I um, gone through ministry, giving up everything as far as I felt like what worldly standards were. So I'm like, all right, cool. This is the next step. So I just went ahead and I made the decision. You know, I'm going to be honest. Um, during that time, I think now looking back at it, I think in my walk and what I would tell anybody is to continue to consult God when you, you know, are thinking about your life partner um, or when you're thinking about getting married. I don't think one should just, especially when you're, when you're a Christian, one should just up and say, okay, cool, this is what we're going to do because this is the, the space or the stage I'm at in my life, if that makes sense. No, I got you. Yeah. I got you. I got you. So, you decide to get married. Yeah. You feeling like this is the right thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you roll in, you get married. Did you guys have a big wedding? Yeah, we had about, it was probably about 75 to 100 people. So I guess that's, that's big. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay, big so, man. y'all yeah. did the whole fairy tale thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 I mean, it is what it is. And how many children did you guys have? So, we got two. So okay. Yeah. So, you got two kids. Yeah, two okay. Kids. So, then life happened. You get married, something had to go wrong if we ended up in divorce. Yeah. So when did you start realizing that things were taking a left turn for you guys? Um, or was it ever good? Well, no, I, it was definitely great. You know, I wouldn't have married her if it wasn't. Like, and I think, shout out shout out to her too, you know, to my, to my kid's mom and my ex-wife. She was an amazing wife and is an amazing person. But I think for me, um... And what I would tell any man is to just communicate your expectations um, when going in or take time um, to know what it is that you really want uh, from your wife. So for me, I think it, it really started to go left when we started sleeping in separate rooms. Jesus. You know, when we started sleeping in separate rooms and couldn't really agree on certain things and things like that or uh, had issues that weren't really communicating. I think that's when things started to go left. I can't really give like a time frame, but that's kind of like uh, content wise when, you know, I kind of felt like things started going left. Um, I started working more. Um, and after that, it was just a downward spiral because we weren't communicating the way we should have been. Okay, now question. I know at this time you were preaching. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were yeah. really active on the circuit. Yeah. So you're preaching, you're heavy in the church. Yeah. Question, did you guys ever consult with anybody in the church or be transparent with anybody in the church family about what was going on at home? Or were you guys presenting and it seemed like y'all were a perfect family? Um, I definitely didn't consult with anybody. I think those that were close to me could tell. Uh, but man, it was it was a lonely road. And I think it was one of those lonely roads mainly because I made it that way. Uh, we were so accustomed to moving as a family anyway that it was kind of one of those things where we were just moving. Um, but there were underlying issues in the household, if that makes sense. No, it makes a lot yeah. of sense. And I think you guys got divorced two years in. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't even think that, it, like, those are rough years yeah. to get through. Because, yeah. you know, when I talk to people, those are the years where you're really trying to get this thing planted. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, too, for us, um, <clears throat> as I look at it, we have been together for a long time um, prior to getting married. But I think that we grew so much in that time frame um, that I kind of felt like this was the next step to take. And we did it versus evaluating where we are as people uh, to judge if we're ready for that next space. Right. Now, yeah. as a man inside, do you feel like you were ready for marriage? Like, when you got married and you guys encountered issues, did it cause other issues in you to surface that you didn't know was there? Um, no. I think at that moment from a, a man would always say, you know, from a financial standpoint or from a bandwidth output standpoint as far as being able to manage the house, yes. I don't think emotionally I was ready. Um, what make you say that? Um, and I only say that because I had uncommunicated expectations. Okay. And I feel like a lot of times that's tied to emotion and communication. 
So I kind of feel like emotionally I wasn't ready and on the communication level I wasn't ready because I wasn't able to communicate it. I wasn't able to communicate what I wanted or what I needed without throwing a tantrum or saying we could just this could just be okay. Over. So for instance, making it plain, if you wanted her to give you more time and attention, you didn't know how to say that. Basically. You yeah. didn't instead you would just get upset and be like, why isn't she doing it? Exactly. Automatically assuming that she's supposed to know that Woo! this is what you're supposed to do and it's not. Yep. Yeah. When she probably would have been willing to give it exactly. if you had just been mature. So it comes with emotional maturity. Oh, absolutely. Definitely marriage comes with emotional intelligence. That's what I, w- I would like to um, call it. Really just being emotionally intelligent about yourself enough to be able to communicate to another human being how you want them to treat you. It's simple as saying, babe, today I need more attention. Yeah. Or, babe, you not paying me... I feel an insecure today. Um, or blah blah blah. I need to know what's going on there. That's cool. Absolutely. That's interesting and that's strong. Okay. A lot of, I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I was gonna say because a lot of men we struggle with that. We expect y'all to already know. And we expect <laughs> men to know. <laughs> right. Let me be clear. Yeah. We expect men to know. Yeah. So. Let me be clear. Like if the trash is not taken out or if the milk ran out in the refrigerator. Yes. We expect you to just go and do it. And yes. the truth of the matter is you guys are willing a lot of the times, but we just have to ask. Yes. And how many times do I hear women say, I'm tired of having to ask? Yes. I shouldn't have to ask, man. Yeah. I don't think that ever dies. Yeah. You do have to ask. I was going to say, man, I think it's imperative for a healthy relationship that you should ask. I it's mean, just yeah. the way it goes. It's yeah. like you have to ask. Yeah. Okay. So now we get to the good stuff. So, all right. So you guys, um, how who said that they wanted a divorce? Who was the um, one to present that statement? Honestly, now that I think about it, I think I threw that out there more than she did. I think when it when it all happened or when it was all final, she she agreed and she she stood her ground. <laughs> um, but I had been I think I had been throwing that out there for a while just because I felt like I was unhappy. You know, I felt like I was unhappy. I felt like I wasn't getting what I, quote unquote, was supposed to be getting. But as I look back at it now, I think that because I had uncommunicated expectations, I, I kind of was coming off a bit, a tad bit more selfish than I should have I should have been. Um, so I was throwing my weight around. You know, I was throwing my weight around. I was throwing that out there a lot. Um, but ultimately, it was a, a collective agreement. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so now everything is crazy. What is it like being in the house together with the children after we've established that we're getting a divorce? Did you guys still remain in the same house? Not for too long. Um, so, you know, for us, our situation wasn't that, wasn't messy like that. You know, um, we had been staples in each other's lives for a long time. So although it hurt separating um, and... It was a divorce for us, you know, being around each other and functioning as, as a unit. Um, it was just something that we taught ourselves that we would have to do, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it was mutual. Yeah. Everybody just kind of went this separate ways. Yeah, pretty much. And, then, and the fortunate thing is, too, the, you know, when we were staying, the lease was almost up anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, all right, we got to be here. We're going to be comfortable. You know, you already sleeping over there. I'm already. It was almost like we was already split up. We just ain't communicate that or even really stamp and make it official, you know. But um, I would definitely have to say I was throwing that out there. Okay. So after all is said and done, y'all living in separate households and things like that, you get divorced. Okay. How was it, um, you know, when you think about divorce and you're in a separate place with the kids sometimes, she's in a separate place, life goes on. So we're gonna be dating other people. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So what did that look like for you and your children? Who started dating other people first? At least who knew about it? Yeah. Who communicated it between the two of y'all that they were dating somebody else first? Um, I did. Yeah, I started dating somebody. Um, and I communicated it, but I, you know, that's such a foreign space, right? So I don't I can't even necessarily say I did it the best way. I did it the way I knew how, um, but I do, now looking at it, I don't think I did it the best way. I, I waited some time before I, you know, introduced and all that, but I think 
So you bring you you make it clear. You like okay, it's I'm seeing like somebody yeah. else. Yeah. And did you have the kids around her? Um, I mean, I'm always with my kids. So, so the yeah. answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. The answer is yes. Yeah. And how did she feel about that? Um, I'm sure she felt some type of way. Uh, she communicated to me a little bit that she felt some type of way, but I know her well enough to kind of know, you know. Right. So you knew what it was. Yeah. Yeah. At, at this point, after a divorce, it can get kind of salty. Yeah. Did you care that she felt the double way? Honestly. Honestly, at that time, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah, no. So let's talk about when she started dating somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> so what did that look like when she said she was dating somebody else? How did you find out she was dating somebody else? Man, so I kind of. I kind of knew because I could feel it. Okay. You know, you could just, you could just smell it. Cause I mean, I just, I, I'm just yeah, one of them type of dudes. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm one of them type of. I'm used to. Kevin, you my, said I can smell it. I can smell it, man. Like, you know, so it was just the way she was walking and the way she like, was. It's just it's the way another, you move and the way like, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm it's like another man in it. Yeah, it's like oh. Okay. You, you look like new new. <laughs> You know, um, but I, um, how did I find out? Oh, so, I mean, I asked her. I just straight up asked her. You know what I'm saying? I was just like, yo, like, are you dealing with somebody because you move in different? You and what'd what she say? She was just like, yeah. You know, she was like, what'd she you was, say? What'd she say? I was yeah. like, don't have them around my kids. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's such a double standard, right? You know what I'm saying? So, this is my thing. <laughs> I know. I know. So you, she says, yes, I'm dating somebody else. And you, the first thing you say, you have the audacity. I know. That you not had your kids around this other woman. I know. Knowing she was uncomfortable with it. I know. And the first thing you said was, don't have them around I my know. kids. I know. I know. I know. Oh, I know. God. So what did she say when you told her not to have him around the kids? You know she blew me off. <laughs> she was just like, <laughs> she's like, man, you crazy, you crazy, you know. Um, but again, that's what I get. You know, <laughs> you know, this whole process, this whole thing has really shown me as a man what happens when you make a decision. Any, it don't matter what the decision is, you know. But it shows me the domino effect of your decisions as a man. Okay, so. She laughs at you, basically. She basically. She's laughing because you, and I'm with her. Yeah. You done had my kids around a whole nother woman, and yeah. now I meet this guy. And my kids are around this guy, and you telling me, it's not even a conversation, you saying don't have my kids around yeah. him. So what did that look like when you found out that the kids, so what did it look like? How did you find out that the kids were around him? So my children are very smart. So, like, when I started hearing my son say little name, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, well, who is that? And then, you know what I'm saying? You he would ask me, yeah. You he would, did I, Yeah, of course. I was digging. Because <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, when your son said it, whatever the name is, what you do? You, like, flew over there and was like, what you say? Yeah, no. Nah, what you like? What you like? Now, be real. Would you, like, tell dad that who it is? No. <laughs> I said, who was that? All right, so I was like, what was that name? And then he was like, you know, that's my friend. And so then I go ask my big one. I'm like, what's up? So then, you know, that's when she tell me, oh, what have you? I'm like, okay, cool. But I mean, I kind of figured that anyway. You know? Okay. Yeah. So how did you react when you found out that the kids had been around him? Um... I had a conversation with her, you know what I mean? Because at that point, we was broke up. So what was that conversation like? Because I'm trying to figure out what grounds you had. I didn't have none, right? So <laughs> I, I didn't have no grounds. So the conversation was stupid. And it was stupid because I was the one coming with all the steam and all the smoke. And so she was calm. So I'm like, yeah, so you just going to have my kids around? She's like, my kids are with me. If he's around, they'll be around. <laughs> <laughs> so what you say? I was just like, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to meet this dude, woo, 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 you know. Um, Has she met the woman that you had around the kid? At that time, about it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, and and, and, I'm, and again, shout out to her because, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like, she ain't really start dealing with somebody until, like, later, later. Like, I jumped out the boat. Just... 
You know, <laughs> that's why I say it's like, man, like. It was just wrong. Yeah. So when you let, okay, so this goes on. So honestly, like, what did this look like? Like, was it ever any incidents or anything like that where her having the kids around him? Like, how was you starting to feel? And were you starting to create issues here? Honestly, man, um, we've been blessed. Um, you know, any issues that I've had with her uh, never spilled over into any relationship that I may have been entertaining or that she may have been entertaining. You know, uh, it would just be between us. Even when her and I would argue and she would, you know, she would whoever she was with, like, it was never a situation where they Jump overstepped their boundaries or anything like that. Yeah, thank you know, thankfully, because, you know, these types of situations can be heated. Did you ever pop up at the house to see who the dude was? Nah. No, nah, I wanted to. I did. I'm not gonna lie to you, but I got some real people in my corner, and they were just like, nah, I, I ain't gonna, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm, what did that look like? Like, because people don't see what men go through after the divorce. Yeah. So here, you first of all, it's this thing. You already know she's with this other man. Yeah. And this is the worst part. Your kids yeah. actually like this guy. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's not like this is a bad it's guy. A bad guy yeah. He's a good He's guy. A good guy. <laughs> and, your, <laughs> and your kids are around this guy. Yeah. You don't want him around a guy. What do you think was the reason inside that you didn't want your kids around this guy? Mm, good question. What do you think it was? So now, um, coming out of all that and you know, being okay and cool with everything, it was it was my own insecurity, you know. I felt like um, that's real big of you. Yeah, it was. Like I'm not gonna lie, it was my own insecurities in the fact that I felt like I had failed as a father. You wow. Know what I'm saying? And I and I got daddy issues, like deep daddy issues, you know what I mean? So I take my fatherhood very seriously. So I think for me, going through all that, I was her moving on was never the issue now that I look at it. I was dealing with me. And the consequences of my actions. And that just happened to be one of the consequences <laughs> of my actions. But it was just in front of me. Because, you know, a lot of times when, you're con when you deal with the consequences of your actions, it can be physical or it can be spiritual, you know. And at the time, I, was, I just happened to be dealing with both. It's physically in front of me and it's spiritually <laughs> on me. Yeah, because you're thinking like, okay, we moved on. And if it's really over between us. You know, I see so many couples, man, and it, this goes on for years. Yeah. That it's a beef every time y'all yeah. move on with another person. Yeah. And I'm like, if you guys are parents, yeah. And the kids are liking this other person, sometimes it seems like that, and you went through that. Yeah. It made you even more mad. Yeah. Because your son, especially your son. My son. <laughs> your son yeah. was yippee yay yeah. over yeah. this dude. Yeah. And yeah. you are hurting inside. Yeah. And do you think that it could have been because you fear him possibly being a better man for him anyway? I think... Even though we know no, nothing can replace you now. Sure. We talking about why you were going through it. Because that's a big one. Men go through this yeah. and they're like, do not put nobody around my kid. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, once you and this woman, the mom, are not in the same household... You, the truth is, as a father, you cannot do it all. Right. That's just the truth. Yeah. Either she's going to come up short, because you a working man. Yeah. Kevin, we know. You yeah. all over the place. <laughs> and when you was working in the clubs and things yeah. like that, yeah. you would be out all night. Yeah. So, we talking about how can you be away from the household and really be handling the duties here. Yeah. Finances don't do anything for the physical duty here. Yeah. yeah. And this woman needs some support. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just so interesting. How What do you have to say to men that are watching, that are going through that dilemma, like, what can you say to make them feel like they are enough and that they're not a failure if another guy come alongside? Yeah, well, I would say, first and foremost, man, be thankful um, that somebody is willing to step in and actually add value to your kid's life. Because the truth of the matter is, they don't have to. They only got to deal with them, for real, for real. You know, because... Some people and some women move a certain kind of way to where it's though you don't have to necessarily have a relationship with my kids because they have a father. So if it's a situation where he's actively in your kid's life and he's making a positive influence, be thankful. You know what I'm saying? Because it could go so many other different ways. Ooh, know? that's a lot. That, I mean... And, and that's coming from me. 
That's you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You know what I mean? And that is like, so much growth. Yeah, dog. Because y'all, yeah, let dog. me tell you, I remember Listen. Listen. some phone conversations Listen. with this dude. Yes, and I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now. I thought that somebody was gonna get hurt. I'm telling you, man. I mean, it's so bad. for you to say that, it's just so much hope in that. Yeah. And so much growth right there, because you say it and you are, you really mean yeah, it. Yeah, I'm living in it. I'm like, I'm actively living in it, like to the point where, like, my son has his own phone. He calls his mom. He talks to both of them. We, what's up, cuz? How you doing? Whoop de whoop. You know, come for the meetup. All that, like. And it, and for me, I feel like as black men, it's time to start fostering healthy relationships with our children as well. Period. That's real. Cause my thing is, how is it going to work? Otherwise, <laughs> if you guys have already made the decision that you're not going to be together, why does it have? You know, some people got it so bad. Yeah. It's it's different when your kids are grown. Yeah. But when you have these young kids, yeah, and you guys have to deal, yeah, I mean, I just cannot imagine how difficult it is when you're not even speaking. Yeah, and that's why I say that I'm I'm thankful because it could have went so many different ways, but you know, I just thank God that He had His hand on it, you know, from beginning to end, and I mean it, you know, it, it it's working. Yeah, oh, it's definitely working. Yeah. So this is another question I have. When you think about um dating and things like that especially with you being a man of the lord like yeah. you a preacher yeah so what does dating look like for a preacher man it's so different and and i say it's different because i'm in tune with the lord and i'm in tune with myself so because of that a lot of stuff I just can't let fly. You know what I mean? Like, like just, what? Like you, all right, so you dating a woman right now, right? Do you even tell women when you meet them that you a preacher? Nah. Yeah, yes. Yeah, nah, preacher. I don't. Yeah. And, and the reason why I don't is because I feel like it doesn't allow me to just authentically be me. Yeah. Uh, but as we talk and as we speak, you know, when you God's child, he just come out. Like, it's, it don't matter what we talking they about. They don't eventually see you yeah. talking to the yes. oh God. Yes, like yes, that. yes. So um, then they ask, and then that's just when I, you know, I tell them. But um, I think for me, it sometimes it's a little hard because I see a lot of surface level stuff, and I'm trying to connect deeper than that. Okay, so when you say surface level, let's say you out to dinner. So normally, if you take a young lady out, if y'all initially meet, I'm guessing that dinner is the first step, right? Yeah, definitely. So or y'all, whatever she, you know, whatever, whatever she she's into. Move, yeah. Right. So y'all out on this date and y'all having a conversation. How into the church does a woman have to be for you to, is that a big deal to you? Or no. do you feel like she can grow right there? I feel like she can grow right there because, I mean, God came and got me out of the strip club. Right. You know what I mean? So for me, I don't. Um, that doesn't have to be a prerequisite for me to entertain you. Right. Um, what are qualities that you look for in a good woman? Like, if you meet a woman, what causes you to say, I can't go out with Shorty again? Mm -hmm. And what causes you to say, I can't wait to see her again? Oh, good question. So, what causes me to not want to go out with her again is if she's loud. Like, I can't really stand, like, an overly loud woman. Okay. <laughs> you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, I just, it's just, because I don't really like attention like that, you know, and it's kind of crazy because, like, I like nice stuff, I like to go play, but I don't, I don't want to be seen here, though, you know, so, like, making a whole, you know, a whole bunch of fuss, I don't really like that. Um, something that would make me want to see a woman again, <clears throat> really, if she just sweet, like, I just like a sweet spirit, you know, that's, that's really what, I'm heavy on the sweet spirit. Now, right this now. is so crazy because... A woman comes off sweet, right? She's like, oh, thank you. Um, I can't wait. Or blah, blah, blah. She's soft-spoken no. and whatever, whatever. But sometimes when women are sweet and things like that, it doesn't make you feel like she a little off. Like, it's a difference between sweetness. Yeah. What level of firm do you want to see in her? And oh. what level of walk all over me? So, and then when I say sweet, I more or less just mean a genuinely good person that you can just feel their energy um i don't necessarily mean like a sweetheart like just dainty um but i do 
I need some pushback. Like, I need some pushback. So if I could do like <laughs> little, like 50% sweet, 50% ratchet pushback, then I'm cool with that. So when you say you need pushback, I'm I'm laughing because you say I need it. Yeah. So what are you saying is pushback from a woman? So what kind of pushback are you saying you need? Um, A woman that will, oh, perfect example. A woman that's willing to ride with me but give her opinion but still trust my judgment if it's never not the same as her. So when y'all disagree, basically, your decision is final? No. Okay, so, how that, so what does that look like? If you and your lady disagree on something, mm -hmm. okay, so some, a decision has to be made. Mm -hmm. We both disagree. Okay. What's the formula for that? It depends on what we, what we don't That's agree what I'm on. If it's like financial, I'm going to go with me. I'm going to go with me because I got a good track record there. So I'm going to go with me. But if it's something else, um, and I know psychologically letting you win is gonna let me win, I'm gonna let you win. Okay. Yeah, I, I just that, yeah, I'm so just one of those type of guys. Money, you like, look, I'm gonna yeah, talk let about me handle. I, I don't even money. wanna handle it, but like, if we ever disagree, I'm gonna probably go with whatever I thought. Okay. So, question: Do you think that you'll ever? You've been divorced, you know, and you had, I mean, it two year run. Yeah. And you were very much so in love with your wife. Yeah. Do you still see yourself being married again? Oh, absolutely. Is that a desire for you? Absolutely. What do you think makes a man want to be that? Because I've seen guys that say they never want to get married or guys that got divorced and say, I never want to get married again. Mm -hmm. So what inside of you, what do you think it is about yourself that makes you want a wife? Um, <clears throat> two things. The first one is, I want another shot. Like, straight up. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm fumbling on the first one. So, I'm just like, cool, I'm going I'm going to make the right decision this time. I'm going to take my time. You know what I'm saying? So, I want another shot. Like, I want to put me in the game, <laughs> Um, But the second thing, man, is I remember, I remember all the good moments from when we were married and how good it felt to have a partner and to just have somebody that you know you can authentically be yourself and you don't have to do the most to get their attention. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's so sweet. Yeah. He said, I remember the good things yeah. Yeah. in the marriage. And I, you like being married, don't yeah. you? Yeah, I like being in a relationship if it's the right person. Yeah, if it's the right if person. If it's the right person. Yeah. So being that you've been married already, you know, this time around, you're not going into it. Like some people go into marriage and you really don't realize what you're going into yeah. to be honest me with you. i was like that you just you really don't know and some things that you should have looked at you didn't know to look yes. at and so this time around what are some things that are a must before you marry a woman and what are some things that are absolute like deal breaker okay when we talk about you know marrying like what would a woman do or present to you now that'll make you say oh she gonna give me a good run mm. this is gonna be a good marriage that's her um, so, excuse me, I would say, first and foremost, she got to love the Lord with all her heart. Like, I think that's the most important thing for me right now, because I have to have somebody that balances me spiritually, um, because that's the, the that's all I have. <laughs> that's you know what I'm saying? That's all I have. That's, that's all I have. So it's like, so I need her to, number one, be, um, love the Lord with all her heart and be able to, um, communicate with me there and i'll just give you three things uh number two somebody who has her head on right and knows where she's going um and i say know where she's going because if we come together i got a plan you got a plan and we can get there together you know um and then lastly i want her to be financially stable or at least have her finances in order like i think that that was a big part too like we didn't necessarily struggle just because i'm a go-getter but at the same time i do see the benefit um and having your finances in order before you get married i got you yeah because i mean a lot of people get divorces because of the strain of oh, money man. I'm and a lot you. of people get together and they acquire so many things and then they realize that it takes a toll on the marriage yeah. because you're doing so many things to keep the finances in order yeah you yeah. know what i mean absolutely and i think like so prime example just to kind of key some people in on my situation um we weren't even necessarily financially struggling because I was I, I ended up once my uh ex wife got pregnant, I asked her to stay home. 
You know wow. I mean? Yeah, I had sure to stay home, so I was paying all the bills and everything. But what it did for me was it, it created a level of expectation that I didn't communicate. So if my finances, or I feel like if my finances and her finances was in order, she could have just took off. My expectations probably wouldn't even have been as high as they were because I'm providing everything. So what was your argument? What you thought this was supposed to be? You thought she was supposed to come home and be Kim Tut? A little bit. Uh, a little bit. But I, I came it. back down to reality. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm not a, I'm not one of them uh -oh, father guys. We got some key feedback from the audience. Okay. First of all, I want to give y'all a shout out. It is so many people on here. My uncle Kevin, I love you. Good to see you. Up, That's a preacher man too. What's up, and uh, my uncle is happily married and he loves being married. Yeah. That yeah. is crazy. I knew he was gonna hop on this show. Hey, and. Hey, Anton, oh my goodness, that is my number one fan. How are you? My sister, Ty, Dana, good to see you. And you have somebody named Tawanda Cossie. Okay. She came in and said, thanks for being transparent. Oh, absolutely. That's yep, my so auntie. Hey, auntie. Yep, your aunt tuned in. So, we have a question from Anton. Okay. Are you going to look for someone just like your ex-wife, or are you looking for something different the next go-round? Mm, that's a, a different look physically or in the personality like do you have a type you know what's crazy um so i'm definitely not gonna look for somebody like my ex-wife and and, and and what i mean by that is what i learned and what i realized um going through that is prior to me <clears throat> excuse me prior to us even getting together i lived a certain type of lifestyle and she lived a certain type of lifestyle. So when we met, it it meshed at that time and space in our life. And we grew with each other over time. So for me, I'm not going to... I'm no longer looking at bad chicks. Because she was beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I'm no longer looking at attractive females saying, I can change her. Or I can make her into what I want her want me to be. That's That was the younger me. So a question I have is, if you meet a woman for whatever reason, you know, she's decent looking, she's attractive looking, she's not what you used to. And you know, when you're single, you kind of just mingling. Yeah. So you go out with this woman and initially, you know, she wouldn't have been your pick physically. Right. But you go out with her and she's exerting all of these other qualities. <laughs> you lame. You are lame. <laughs> attracted to are you willing to get to know her because she has all the other attributes and assume that attractions may grow in that area later it's kind of hard um and, that's, <laughs> <laughs> and i say that right because i was just having this conversation with one of my um female friends man um <laughs> Okay. And I was trying to wrap my, my my mind around it if I could, right? She's like, listen, she checks off all your boxes, but she just not cute. I'm like... Oh, I ain't say not cute. Well, not cute, but you know... Not your just not your, Yeah, not my, that's the same thing, but um, probably not. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean... So, but then right, again, let, me, let me say it differently, though. What if y'all are going out right? At least you were open to the date. Oh, and then, know. and then, what if you start feeling this surprise attraction? Would you fight it because she doesn't look how you normally wanted her to look, or would you lean into it? I'm, I'm an organic guy. So if somehow, <laughs> <laughs> like somehow, she was my type at first, but then she become my type, right? I'm cool with but it. But do you know a lot of people say that that happens? My man told me the same thing. Listen, I'm gonna tell you the honest to God. It just ain't happened to me yet. Yes, <laughs> yes. But my thing is, you know, my from friend to friend. Yeah. Be open. Yeah. You because, told me that. You told me that. Listen though, because man, sometimes you can miss a great thing. You did. Tell and me what that. happens is, when I know sometimes when I have dealt with, you know, guys. And they were what I wanted physically, or you know, if I jumped out there back then sexually mm -hmm. too fast, mm -hmm. it blinded me yeah. from the other things. That's a fact. That's and a fact. And it, it's like it's crazy because when you the physical attraction is not overwhelming you. Yeah. I do think that that's important. Yeah. But when the physical attraction is not overwhelming you, yeah. and you get to know somebody, you know who is a good example of this? Tiffany Haddish and Carmen. 
Yeah. If you guys haven't checked out their interview yeah. with Mahat Allen, yeah. check that out. Tiffany Haddish said, you not my type. And I'm like, come on. Right. But, and you look at Tiffany Haddish compared yeah. to the women he could have. Right. I ain't hating on Tiff. She good looking. Yeah. But, I mean, come he was on. With mother. Come on. He was with you mother. You understand Earth. what I'm saying? Yeah. But they made it work. And yeah. Tamara, Tamara, thank you for chiming in. And thank you for stopping by. Tamara said, it happened. And it will be your biggest blessing when you can get past that other thing. And I'm going to tell you, I'm, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting. Because the love is deeper. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's a surprise. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And it's weird. Okay. Well, I, I will say this. I would never um, block my blessings. Um, and to, to be quite honest, like this is probably, you probably like the third or fourth conversation that I've had in regards to that. So I thank God trying to tell me something. Yeah, stop being lame. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you, I lost a lot of years with yeah. that. Oh, I yeah. wanted the Ferrari. Yeah. I had a thing. I'm talking about like, ooh. Yeah, I already know. Yeah. Definitely, I'm sure. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I think, but that's the thing, right? So should we have expectations or should we have a type? Like, or should we just, like... Oh, I'm so glad you said that. I, I'm going to tell you something after. We got some shows okay. coming up on it. You know, I'm recruiting for a show right okay. now for that. Okay. But, look, this is a thing. Having a type, it can limit you. Okay. I believe that us having deal breakers is one thing. Okay. But having a type physically is dangerous. Okay. It is so dangerous. Because I know people that say, if he's not tall or dark-skinned, I'm not dealing. Okay. And I know I used to be like that. Okay. Like I like I liked a certain build. Okay. I used to like tall guys and dark skinned guys. Okay. And if you weren't that, I would say that openly. Okay. I just wouldn't give you a chance. Okay. And you forfeit. You can right. forfeit. Right. Okay. But what happens if you and this young lady happen to be in a grocery store in the same aisle? She's good looking. I think the person should catch your eye. Yeah, man, I can't. I can't get it right. It ain't like you about to just approach some woman. Yeah, now and, like listen, all right, so like say for instance. You know, she's cute, right? But she do some of the stuff that I don't really like that women be doing. Yeah, yeah. Like, little stuff. <laughs> God help. I'm, I yeah, I'm praying. Huh? Like, I really <laughs> am. Like, I'm trying, like, Lord, like, I want this wife. I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Just, you know, soften my mind and my heart. Because I don't know. I think. I will say this. I believe that sometimes. Okay, hold up, y'all. We got some questions and some put back. Right, so, my big sister, Talisha. Talisha said you're going to know your type because it's going to stimulate your mind. That's it. That's it right You there. know what I mean? And that's why I so said... So what if she ugly or stimulating your that's mind? That's why I said that. That's why I was like, I got to keep my options open because the truth is, man, like if you can captivate my mind, you got a chance. You got a chance. Like, I'm I'm a sapio. I need that. Okay, so Dee Dee, uh, my best friend, she said, having a type is not the problem. It's rejecting anything that's natural type. Ooh, yeah. And you, I just said that. If it wasn't tall and dark skin, yeah. you was out. Yeah. It was an out for me. You know, and Dee Dee said, consult God and he'll give you what you need. Facts. And that's, you know what y'all, I'm going to get in right here. I believe that God gives us free will on this. Mm. You know what I mean? That's, I'm, not, a bad, that's not a bad position. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to be right here. Because some people, you know, I have seen churches where Nobody was getting married mm. because their their um, teachings were so strict and harsh. Mm -hmm. Now I believe we go by God's guidelines. Mm -hmm. He gives us a way to do things, mm -hmm. and that's for the win. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I think God will instead, from my experience, show you who a person is, and then you have the decision. I, I can definitely, I receive You that. feel me? Now, yeah, we yeah. approach this thing and we can say, God, can you show me who this is? Right. But God is not going yes or no it for you. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Now, there have been times where I would say people did reject me in my life. But I think when we get to a certain maturity in mm -hmm. life, God gives you the free will. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's like, okay, I showed you who he was. Now you make the decision. You caught him in a lie. There you go. I, you had dreams. 
We ain't even gonna get hey, it. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, we not gonna go that deep. God said, I don't talk to you in dreams. Yes, yes. This man is lying yes. to you, or this woman is not a yes. hundred. She's shiesty. Now nobody is perfect. Yes. That don't mean if you catch your significant other lie about going to get the tacos, you know. I mean, you gotta yeah. realize you're growing with a person. Yes. And some people are just too strict and unforgiving. Yeah. When you're dating women, guys, you are not going to meet the person that you want to marry a lot of times. When you meet somebody, they have that potential, and it's up to you guys to grow that thing. Mm-hmm. It's And a lot of people in here, in this generation, want that microwave move. Yeah, nah. And it's going to take some growth. Yeah, and you, some, you got to tweak that thing a little bit, yeah. too, because... You know, the truth of the matter is a lot of us is going through a lot of issues that we ain't even started to touch the crevice of, let alone we trying to be with somebody for the rest of our lives. <laughs> and we ain't even dealt with issues from when we 12, when we 35 and 40. All right, give me an example of that. Uh, for me, daddy issues. You know what I'm saying? What does a daddy <clears throat> issue look like for a guy? So for me, a daddy issue is my father was never in my life. Um, I met my dad on my own accord at 25. He passed away by the time I was 30. Okay. So for me, um, daddy issues have always been um, a little bit of abandonment. How did you know that you had daddy issues? Like, what, as you look back over your marriage mm-hmm. specifically, mm-hmm. what traits did you have or actions did you have that showed you later that you had daddy issues? Um, one, always wanting to leave. Instead of just sit down like a man, like a father would teach you to deal with your problems and talk through them versus just getting up and leaving you okay. know, and not being able to communicate. Um, also, too, after the divorce, um, feeling less than a man because I felt like I had become my dad in a sense because I had made some of the mistakes that caused me not to any lo- no longer be with my family. Still was with my kids, but again, just the uh, dynamic has shifted because of a decision that I made. So mainly my daddy issues were um, because he wasn't in my life, I started to feel like I'm not as active as I should be with my kids. Um, And then two, I just was not a good communicator at all. So how important do you think premarital counseling is? Very important. Very important. Why? Um, Because I think that it gives, and we went to premarital counseling. Um, but I think that it gives people an opportunity to um, evaluate the situation, look at what marriage is supposed to be like, I would say from a biblical standpoint, um, and then it also gives you some practical things to take with you in your marriage. We just ain't finished, because we thought, I thought we was good. <laughs> no, no. I thought we was so, good. Yeah. So y'all, y'all discontinued it? I ain't going to say we discontinued it, but I was just like, I think we good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I guess that is discontinued. Yep. Yeah, and see, y'all, that's so good right there because a lot of times when we go to counseling, I'm going to tell y'all right now, I go to counseling and I counsel people. But the reason why I go to counseling and I stay in counseling year round, I have a standing appointment. I have two of them. One of them is biblical and one of them is from the psychology scientific point of view. And the reason why I go is because a lot of times there are things that's wrong with me and I don't even realize it. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think that's another reason why I'm kind of taking my time on my next relationship, but I'm, you know, I'm dating. But. Question from the audience. Okay, so Anton said, do you think that men care um, care more and are hurt more about the family breaking up than women? I, I would say I did. I can't speak for all men. Um, it bothered you? I feel like it bothered me a little bit more just because I feel like she grew up with her mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? I didn't. So I think I took it a little bit harder when I realized what I did. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I think I took it a little harder. And then also, too, um, family is big in my family. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we got family all over the country but we always try our best to get together and talk and pray on Saturdays together and all that so for me man I think definitely men if you think about it because it's like we feel like we failed everybody like you know I'm sure the woman is probably hurt and and all that and I'm not downplaying how she feels but like if you just take a second to just step in the shoes of a 
a real man, um, he feel like he failed the world. I know I did, you know. Um, so yeah, I definitely think men care. Yeah, and it is. Yeah, I think it is. Um, I'm not a man, but when I talk to men about it, and you know, when I counsel guys, a lot of men do. They look at it like the world is looking at yeah, me. Yeah, man. I was supposed to leave my family, yeah, and man. this thing has fallen apart. And in the event that the woman has selected another guy, Ooh. that makes me feel like this man is filling some shoes that I couldn't. There you go. What was it about myself that I couldn't provide for this woman that I love so much? Yeah. Why wasn't I good enough? Yeah. Or when you, you know, in a situation like me where I just kept saying, we ain't got to be together, we ain't got to be together. It's like, all right, cool. <laughs> you know it's over. Yeah. When she don't have no fight in her no more. Yes, yeah, sir. It's, it's a over. cold dinner. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's rough. That's ugly. Yeah. It's like that though. Yeah. And you know, uh, it's just so ugly. And the thing, like you said, it's just so many things that you take into consideration, man. You know, after the divorce, you work through the kids. Yes. Yes. You work through the failures. You work through the insecurity. Yes. You know what I mean? Um, what do you think about your divorce is going to make you a better husband the second go around? Ooh, so much. Um, because I consider my divorce probably one of the biggest lessons that I learned so far. Um, and I think that the first thing that um, I'm going to institute or that um, – I've taken from a marriage is to respect the institution of marriage. Respect it for what it is. You know what I mean? Um, don't, you know, I'm not going to enter into it. Um, and I didn't the last time, but lightheartedly. Like, I want to really choose somebody who at the end of the day, regardless of whatever, I can see myself serving until I die because that's really what marriage is about. It's about service and, and serving your mate and being there, of course, as their partner. But ultimately, there's a, a work, a spiritual work that's indicative of you serving that person. So I just would want to be with somebody who um, I can put in a good work for and, and make God happy behind it. Wow, that is so big. I'm not sure I ever heard a man say that about marriage. You know, it's about me serving yeah. this woman. Yeah. So what does that look like, though? What does it look like for the people <clears throat> that haven't been married before? Sure. You know, what is it? Because I believe you don't know that you know that you know until you've been in it. Yeah, definitely. You can learn a lot, but being in it is different. Yeah, definitely. So serving this woman, what do you think, what what does that look like? Um, You know, and I, and I will say, man, this posture only came from being broken. You know what I'm saying? Like, this posture only came from being broken. But uh, really serving number one in a marriage is just all about your ego dying first and foremost you know your ego dying and as a man you being open to whatever this person needs to make them happy even if you don't necessarily agree with it even if it's stupid even if it's dumb if that's what she want to do then that's what we're doing because i know that that's going to make her happy but it's also going to add value to our relationship See, what I realized in my marriage and coming out of that and just dealing with women, when women look to a man, um, they're really looking for a safe space, you know, a place that they can feel safe. So if you don't make them feel safe, if you don't make them feel heard, then, you know, you're already kind of on shaky ground. So um, I would definitely say that just, just being a safe space and being somewhere that uh, that particular person can unpack. Okay, this is about to get good. So, what do you need her to create for you? Since you said in your marriage the first go around, you didn't know how to voice that. Yeah. When you sit down with your woman now, what are you telling her that you need from her? What does that look like? Um, it's vocal. I'm very vocal now. Um, but I think more than anything that I need uh, from her is just a listening ear and a heart for me. And what I mean by heart for me, I just mean, <clears throat> excuse me, genuinely concerned about my welfare and my well being physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. You know, that's kind of like on the surface, though. Yeah. So, okay. Um, 
I want to get a little deeper right there. Okay. You know, because we really want to know what specifically that looks like. You know, when you say that you need a listening ear. Okay. What does that look like? So, really, just somebody who is going to listen to me um, and offer solutions or offer help. You know, I'm one of those type of guys where, let's say you paint. Like, that's what you do. Well, baby, if that's what you do, I'm going to come out there and I'm going to get in your element. Or if you got a problem going on or something like that, I'm going to try to help you with a solution. So for me, somebody that's just helpful, um, and like I said, they're just a listening ear, more attentive to me, you know? So whereas though it's like, yeah, I can say it, but if you just listen, you know what I need. I got you. Yeah. So you just saying, like, I shouldn't have to keep, it's, we go going in circles if we spend the time and I'm talking to you and you're not getting to know me any better. Exactly. I got to keep repeating the same thing. Exactly. If you heard me say, I don't like rice, and you keep cooking me rice. Why you keep cooking me rice? Yeah, that's <laughs> what it's You're not, not listening. You're not really listening. You're not listening at all. It doesn't make sense. And, you know, when you talk about, um, you know, just the portion about serving somebody. Yes. It, it's so interesting because unexpected things come up yes. in relationships. And, you know, when you see that a person um, requires certain things, let's be honest. Sometimes you might not feel like mm -mm. So what does it look like when you don't feel like doing this for this person? So that's the service part. Um, that's really the thick, that's in the thick of it on the service part. And that's why the number one thing that I would want is for my person to have a relationship with God because they won't abuse that power. You know what I'm saying? They won't use that power for manipulation. Um, so for me, when I think about service, I think about serving God first. That's why I said when I on my next marriage, I'm coming in with a service mindset because I understand that in serving this woman, I'm going to be blessed by God. So I might very well not like to do five out of the ten things that she want to do, but that five that I don't like doing, I'm going to just take it on the chin because I know God got me on the back end. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way I can and, put you it. Know, I think that's where a lot of people feel. I know for me, when um I'm dating a guy, yeah. if it comes a time where it's a... I notice that a lot of people fall off the bandwagon when it's time for sacrifice. Mm. And I think that that is the defining moment for the people that are single. You know what I mean? Because if you're married, you're in it. Yeah. But <laughs> for the people that are dating and single... If you see that something that you need or something comes up and it's an inconvenience mm -hmm. to your partner, that's where you're going to really yeah, see I agree. the truth. I agree. Because it's going to be a lot of times in your marriage that things aren't convenient. Yeah, yeah. And the truth of the matter is, are you going to fall off every time it's not going your way? Yes, very much And so. that is going to be a lopsided marriage. You're going to find yourself putting in all the work because you're dealing with this full breath. So I, I strongly suggest that people don't overlook that. Like yeah. if I'm dealing with a guy and let's say my car breaks down, you know, for whatever reason, I'm like, babe, hey, I need you to come get me real quick. And he like, well, you know, the game on. Uh, and y'all don't look crazy because, you know, things like this happen. Oh, yeah. I was about to say, I've I've been sitting next to a partner. <laughs> and he did that. Yeah. Like, oh, or if it's our date night and his money is short, which I pray we not have them issues, but. You know, let's just say this is an example. If we have date night and your money's short and you choose to take that money, your last, to do something else rather than keep our relationship going or something. Now, it's not like you're paying a bill. You're going to buy a video game or a pair of shoes. <laughs> or a pair of shoes. And, you know, this yeah. is real life. Ladies, yeah. look at stuff like yeah. that because yeah. he doesn't have you at heart. He's That's still true. he's still single and concentrating on himself. Yeah. The level of sacrifice is so important. Or something as simple as somebody being sleepy. You might be sleepy. I get it. And you need to rest or whatever. You need to be tired. Yeah. Whatever. But I'm like, look, I, I know this is out the blue, but I need to talk. You got to get up, man. You can't make that sacrifice. <laughs> what we going to do? Yeah. And the, the truth of the matter is when you're with the right person. That's it. It's not even a question. That's it. It's, it's like, yeah, because I can't, if my significant other needs to talk, and I'm tired, and I work pretty hard, you know what I mean? I'm, I, I'm trying to tell you, I don't, it's not even a thought to me, because yeah. I know he's not going to randomly do that. Yeah. So at this point, it's a sacrifice of love. Yeah. 
Sometimes love has to be sac- sacrificial. And I believe that's the love of God that's displayed it. in that's our lives. But if a person can only love you when it's convenient, that's I just, don't, level, I just see that. Level. I see that folding. Yeah, very much so. Because, I mean, there is no love without sacrifice. Not no real love. Do you know how many people just don't have love? They got fake love? I mean, and it lasts for years sometimes. You got lost out of relationships that last because one person is stretching themselves all the time. God bless them. God bless them because I ain't doing it. <laughs> I ain't doing it. I ain't lasting. I can't and I won't. I will not. And you know what? I cannot believe it, but an hour has passed that fast. What? I know. I thought we just started talking. I know. The, the shows go by so fast. Dang. Especially when you're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. But I do. I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, you guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Kev, thank you so much for coming. Absolutely. I mean, your wisdom when it comes to the ladies and marriage and things like that, and even singleness now. Yeah. And as a preacher, yeah, you know, it's, it's just crazy. It's crazy out here. Yeah. And, you know, um, I just do, I appreciate you taking the time to come in. Well, you guys, I will see you guys right here next week for another episode of Let's Talk with Ro. Yep. We added it out. Yep, yep, yep. That was crazy. It was good. Yeah.